There we go. Hello and welcome to another episode of The Zoo. Today we're going to talk about social media, specifically around social media's impact on business, on enterprises, on the business-to-business -business sales cycle. Uh, the Zoo is a bit of a skeptic when it comes to the impact. I don't think CIOs make business decisions necessarily based on what's written on Twitter. My good friend Carlos here is here to dissuade me of that opinion and show me the light and explain how social media is actually the way to market today, I believe, uh, in, in today's enterprise world. So well, welcome for the first time to the zoo, Carlos. It's really nice yeah, to be it's here. It's great to be here on the zoo with you, Alf. Um, you know, needless to say, I'm a big fan. I work with you. I see the productions. I joined the BMC team on an ongoing basis. So it's uh, a pleasure and an honor to join you here in the guest seat for the first time. And hopefully it's the first of many opportunities to come. I hope so. I hope so. So tell us first a little bit about yourself, Carlos. You, you have a fairly deep background in social media, uh, both mm -hmm. on the consumer and enterprise side. So tell, share a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, for those of you watching, it's, it's great to see all of you. I'm the uh, global head of social media for BMC. I work very closely with Alf as well as uh, you know the entire enterprise and the organization. Prior to coming to BMC, I've worked in social media now uh, for about eight years. So the first few years um, in the space, I had my own business, I had my own staffing firm, and from there, I was actually recruited by a company by the name of Winn Dixie, which is one of the largest supermarket chains in the U.S. I was recruited by them uh, to start up social media for them at the beginning of 2012. So that's really where my career in brand marketing and social media on a corporate level began. And from Winn Dixie, I was a head of digital for Save a Lot. From Save a Lot, I moved on to LinkedIn, which is where my B two B experience came into play. Worked with LinkedIn in their sales solutions business unit. Um, and ultimately I ended up here at BMC working with you today. So, um, like you said before, great mix of consumer and B2B experience and social. However, I'll be the first to say that on social media, everyone's a buyer, whether it's B2B or B2C, it's all the same. Uh, so just want to go ahead and address that myth. The only thing that really changes is who's your target consumer, who's your target buyer and how you speak to them is really what varies. Um, the product obviously varies as well, but everyone's a buyer out there. So I kind of like to put that out there because there's so much talk around is social media valuable for B2B as like it is for B2C. And absolutely. Um, at the core, the keyword social media is social. You have to socialize. You have to have conversations. And unlike traditional uh, broadcast media, Contrary to popular belief, social media is just not about broadcasting or pushing out content. It's really about building a community and having a conversation with your target buyers. So uh, I'm really excited to uh, chat with you about all things social business and uh, kind of demystify what some out there, especially in the B2B tech community, might see as not being as valuable to drive business as they should be. Tell me more about everybody's a buyer. Am I a buyer? I never saw myself as such. You know what? Everyone's a buyer from the standpoint of you as a consumer are a potential buyer of products or as a IT professional in this case, you have the impact to sway buying decisions at the company that you work for. Whether you are directly a buyer or whether you are someone who's a practitioner who might see really cool technology that then you refer to your boss. So you're a buyer from that standpoint and more of like the B2B context. In the B2C context, let's face it, you're always seeing other people out there either wearing a certain product or endorsing a brand or you have companies that also are advertising to you. So um, that's, that's where I put it into context right out of the gate. Um, it's all about knowing who your audience is. So the mistake a lot of companies make is they think by us having a presence on social media, people are automatically going to care. And that's incorrect. The first thing that you need to do is you need to identify who is your target audience? Who do you really want to speak to? Who are you trying to reach? And ideally, where does that audience live? So for example, in our world here at BMC, we are trying to reach an IT professional. Chances are that IT professional is not going to go on Pinterest to learn about BMC's IT enterprise solutions, right? Chances are they're probably not even going to go onto a platform like, you know, an Instagram 
to learn about what we do. But we do know that our audience, based on insights and analytics and research, lives on LinkedIn because they're a, a senior IT decision maker audience. We know that younger IT professionals live possibly on Twitter. So again, it, it starts with at the core identifying who your target demographic is, number one. And this is applicable to whether you're in B2B or B2C, identifying where your audience lives and then going after them and speaking to them on the mediums in which they're engaging. And quite frankly, I'm not a proponent of being on every social network. I am a proponent for being on the ones where you get the biggest impact and reach. Okay. What about vendors being on those sacred hallways? Take our own uh, group of Remedy users here at BMC. So they are very uh, close-knit. Uh, if we set foot uh, where they are hanging out, they will immediately, it will make things mm -hmm. worse. Um, so so how do you infiltrate that? How do you work your way around that type of uh, barrier? You know what, Alf? It's all about adding value to them. And uh, I, I put this into context before coming to BMC, like I said before, I worked in, uh, in retail and CPG for Winn-Dixie. And in that environment, my job was to try to get more moms and more of the cooks in the house to come to Winn-Dixie to buy product. And the way that we did that was by adding value and showing them, here's how you take a $20 budget and stretch it into a meal for four uh, tonight. And here's how you do it within 10 minutes. Same thing happens in IT or in B2B as a vendor. It's all, how does your product add value to this person's job, to their life? How does it make life easier? And honestly, as a vendor, how do you make this individual and their organization be much more successful? Because let's face it, like everyone out there who's on the buying side, they obviously have an end game. They want to be able to you know, continue to advance in their career or be able to make you know, moves and headways within their organization. So as a vendor... If you can make someone's job easier, I think you've already instantly won. Now, how you get there is a lot you know, easier said than done. How you get there is more of a slower, methodical moving process. So it's doing things like what we do at BMC by having a corporate blog, having information that's relevant to this audience, you know, putting content in front of them that inspires and educates at the core. If you do anything right on social media before you even try to sell a single product, or have a conversation around sales, you should be looking for ways that you can inspire and educate. Because if you can educate someone and make them a lot smarter, then you've potentially opened up that door for them to want to inquire to learn more about you. Where a lot, a lot of companies mess up is they put the cart before the horse. It's all about the product. They, they make all the focus on the product and very minimal education behind how this solution can make someone be much more efficient and effective in their job. You have to write, if you look at the, um, on the B, B2C side, the cosmetics industry, um, multi-billion dollar industry, um, sell an enormous amount through YouTube videos where young women are showing you how to apply certain brands of makeup to get a certain look um so you learn how not so you couldn't care less actually what the product is you just want to get that result and if that happens to be mac or whatever the brand is um you'll go and purchase it having two teenage daughters this is an amazing channel of marketing as one i'm thinking that's exactly what we should do with our solutions although the technology is showing our stuff and saying here's something you can tweak you know something you can do differently fitbit do the same thing with their with their devices like how you can get the most out of it if you will of your already existing investment or of the changes you're looking at doing so i think there's a lot to be learned there really and maybe we, you know i should do this <laughs> maybe we should look at doing this here at bmc um so you can be helpful you can penetrate that you, you find you find your target which sometimes is more than just buyers it could be uh, influencers like analysts right. and press and bloggers and so on. You find where they are, you, you listen to what they talk about, you provide values in the discussion rather than you're storming. And I, I always try to explain it to uh, social media. As, uh, think about it as a pub, right? You don't just walk in and start talking right. to someone. You really start Correct. listening. And then you maybe that makes a guy you're watching the same game and then there's a three-pointer and that's how you connect by saying, wow, that's cool. Okay. Same subtlety is sometimes missing in social media. And so, so, so I think that's a great point that you bring in. Bringing in value is an important thing. Uh, you... So, so now we got them on a hook. 
but how do we influence how do we change their buying behavior by do we become their friend do we actually socialize when do we actually be friend? i wouldn't say be friend but we, we enter their right. network of right. voices right and they start to listen to us if we have a valuable statement to, 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 to offer them does that actually influence who they then buy do is it true that people buy not good products from people but they buy product from good well people? i think at, at the core alf for any brand and again kind of putting it back into the context of, of us here at bmc in, in a b2b environment it's what purpose does social media solve for your organization and that's a question that right out of the gate any social media manager anyone you know leading social media for an organization once you've addressed the number one question, which is who are we trying to reach? Number two is what purpose is social solve for our organization? Honestly, that's a tough question for a lot to answer because environments like ours, you have several silos within an organization. The way social media benefits HR is completely different than how social media benefits sales. And leaders such as myself, it's up to us to identify that and work directly with those silos because you won't have a balance. You don't want, you don't want every message that goes out from your brand to be sales focused. So for someone like HR, we're leveraging social media from a recruitment and talent acquisition standpoint. We're also using it for employer branding to show that BMCs are an awesome place to work with great benefits. The other aspect, and let's face it, we are a business. So we are looking to sell product. And the way that we sell product, so this is what's really important to sales, is by working with demand gen, but not also po just po posting demand gen content. It's also posting content that's awareness around BMC. So who is BMC? What products do we offer? And again, it goes back to at the core, what value do we serve to others in the industry, to decision makers specifically? So how you get there, you, you mentioned friendships. It's all about relationships. We have to build relationships at scale. Relationship is excellent. We have to build yeah, relationships yeah. at scale with a large community. And I'll give you an example. We have over 100,000 followers on our LinkedIn page. How do we reach that 100,000? And biggest mistake that a lot of brands make is they're always looking to grow, grow, grow their social presence, but many of them don't spend time nurturing. I'd rather spend time nurturing that 100,000 followers on LinkedIn because when that, within that 100,000 followers, these are people I know that at one point took the action of clicking a follow button. So it's our obligation mm -hmm. as marketers, as good corporate citizens, to put the best type of content in front of them. And this is where it goes to building a relationship at scale. Granted, someone like you or I can't necessarily speak to every person one-on-one. -on -one. Sales can't speak to every single person in that environment one-on-one. -on -one. But what you can do is you can post in provocative, engaging content in which then they will contact sales. And then through sales, through demand, through the folks that are qualifying leads, then you can do what's called social selling. And that's where more of the one-to-one -one aspect in social media comes to play. That's using LinkedIn to formally connect. That's using Twitter to have dialogue, to share content. See, that's something that happens outside of marketing. You know, within marketing, globally, it's how do we build the presence of the brand? How do we create that mass awareness at scale? And then also, how do we drive potential buyers through the sales funnel? When it gets to the, to the medium, really the medium to the bottom of the sales funnel, that's when marketing really turns over to sales and says, hey, we've driven mm -hmm. leads your way. Now you need to take these leads and you need, you need to nurture them and you need to go sell them a product, sell them something. How you do that on social media, it's one-to-one. -one. It's not broadcast communications at that point. And uh, you know, I, I, I think one-to-one -one is really something that a lot of people miss out on. And I say that because I get hit up by vendors on a daily basis trying to sell me social media SaaS solutions. And a lot of them think that just because I'm on Twitter or on LinkedIn, by sending me a tweet, you're going to get my attention. Well, get in line. A lot of people do that. But the ones that actually yeah. take the time to learn about me and research me, like I'll give you an example. I had a vendor a couple of weeks ago that saw one of my videos on YouTube. And I was talking about DJ Khaled, who's a, a really famous DJ within the hip hop and rap community. He knows that I'm big into Snapchat and DJ Khaled's a big figure on Snapchat. So this vendor literally sends me an email, my BMC email address, referring to a YouTube video that I made that's unassociated with what I do for work, unassociated with BMC. But referring to that, that is an example of how you get in with a prospective buyer. 
Mm. Yeah, I think that last stretch, that uh, final mile there might, we tend to switch from digital social media, digital communication to more analog email driven communication, uh, phones and so on. Um, and it, we will lose that thread of social engagement at the final line. Um, it's very interesting. Well, I, I do appreciate how you nested it very nicely together, how you stash at the top to enter the community and ends up with the final point there. I really appreciate you coming into the Zoo Callers. Uh, again, we're going to have you here many more times, and especially when we have a new reopening in a, in a, in a, in a while. So thank you so much for showing up. Thank you for having me on here today, Alf. It's been a pleasure. For the rest of you out there, take care. Be safe. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.